Perfect. Okay, so um, the reason I deferred is I, I didn't know I have this one slide in here. And uh, if uh, I have shared this a little bit earlier, you would have seen my phonetic uh, help for everyone. So my name is Jennifer Wunschef. Um, if, uh, if you pronounce it in the true German way, it's Wunschef, but um, it helps on the American side to, to make it simpler. I've been in the automotive industry. Uh, for over 25 years as an engineer, vice president, COO, um, I've been also board members. Um, I've been the direct supervisor of all different levels from uh, individual contributor to senior executive, um, a mentor and a coach from CEOs to individual contributors. And I've worked with international teams. I think if anyone else touches the screen, it moves. Uh, the, so please don't click any buttons if you're a co-host. Um, I've been a mentor and a coach um, and international direct reports in about 15 different countries. So uh, I worked in the startup industry as well as traditional um, tier one and OEM environments. Um, and I've had the opportunity to live and work in Michigan and California and in Germany. So um, it, it, uh, before we start talking about the problems, I always like to reflect on the benefits and um, just make sure that we capture that. And no traffic jams, being able to sleep in longer, saving on gas and commuting costs, reduce pollution from that commute, uh, being able to spend more time with the family um, or the things around the house, laundry being one of them I know it was mentioned. Um, in, case, in some cases, you can be more productive with less distractions. I know if, if you don't have a, a direct office environment, it can be more distracting. Um, there is a better flow of information. And what I mean by that is there have been several studies of the, of the hybrid environment, and that flow of information um, has uh, made a flattened organization. So all levels of the organization are receiving information. Um, and there isn't that hierarchy of different floors in the building. Um, and that's more in the remote uh, um, environment. Hybrid does add additional um, complexity layers to that. Um, but in general, there's been a better flow of information to all the different levels in the organization. Then the problems, and I know quite a few of you, I took a, uh, a few minutes to take a look at what, what was in the chat and hopefully I've captured quite a few of these. Um, it can be lonely, um, lack of human connection. If you're not physically in the office, um, there are fewer people that you run into during the day um, and a lack of a clear routine. I know quite a few people mentioned Zoom fatigue or a lack of a routine or not being able to find that niche of a routine. Uh, and home and work life are just blurred. Um, you don't have that transition of getting in a car and having that commute and having that, you know, whether it's even five or 10 minutes or, or uh, up to an hour commute time that allows you to transition. Sometimes too many distractions. Um, and then there's the complaint from, from various employees. I, you know, I need to set up a meeting just to ask a simple question. Whereas if I were in the office, I could I walk over to somebody's desk or, or meet somebody by chance in, in the hallway or at lunch or in a meeting uh, and just be able to ask a simple question. So it gets frustrating to have to set up a meeting. Adding time zones in. Now that's a challenge, whether you're in a remote office or, or not in a remote office. But if you work with people that are in different time zones in the U.S. or across the globe, um, it can make challenging setting up a meeting or even just asking a question. And there's a, a big concern about the lack of spontaneous or creative interactions, those chance meetings. Uh, uh, there was one study I read uh, um, before we went into hybrid and remote offices that smokers had become the most connected individuals in the company, not because they smoked, but because when they went outside to uh, uh, to have a cigarette, they were meeting with people's uh, people of various level um, during the day and and really had a chance to connect. Um, so in the end, you know, a hybrid and remote impact is felt by all. Uh, so it's not just an individual contributor, but supervisors and and bosses also feel the impact. So one of the things that I really wanted to talk about is is breaking it down. Why do we have uh, um, 
these challenges when we work in a remote or hybrid office. And so two key areas that I wanted to focus on are personality and the structure of work. So this is a matrix and, and um, it has on the vertical axis, how structured do you like the environment that you work in? Um, and so some people feel that they need a really defined clear activities and clear routine. And so they're up at the top of the chart um, and wanna have a very structured office environment or very structured workday environment. Um, and then on the other hand, there's individuals that really enjoy an unstructured work environment, enjoy the ambiguity and the change and the, the spontaneity that's created when you have, when you can, we could choose what to do at any minute of the day. Um, and so there's that, that full level of spectrum that, that both the individuals feel as well as your peers and your, your boss. So keeping that in mind um, is important in helping both yourself and your team um, to feel healthy and happy at work because you may, have, you, you may have to create structure. If you're the type of person that likes a very structured work environment, you may have to uh, artificially recreate that um, in, your, in your home environment. Then let's switch gears and talk about the, the uh, horizontal axis and that's talking about personality. So in the personal tendencies we have on the left side, we have introvert. And those individuals are energized when they're alone. They enjoy the quietness and solitude. And in a large corporate office, they need to find those quiet spaces. Um, but when they're at home, um, if they can, uh, if they have a, a closed office, they can they can find that quietness. But um, if they have to share uh, a kitchen table with uh, um, with two children and uh, and uh, their spouse, then it, it might be difficult to have that quiet and solitude to work efficiently. Then we have, on the other hand, uh, the extrovert on the right hand side that are energized by group dynamics and light and sound, and they need to have that office environment, just the vibe uh, of working in, a, in an office or in, in a factory where, where you have that interaction of people. So up in the upper right-hand corner, I had, oops, let's back up a little bit. Um, where do you fit? Where does your boss fit? And where do your team members fit? So a couple of stories that I had is, uh, so for some of my more extroverted team members, we actually searched the internet and found different sounds of the office so they could play that in the background or having music played. Zoom has a wonderful feature that they can, it can block out most background information that's not talking, uh, but those individuals could have that, that uh, um, music playing in the background to help them be productive. Uh, on the other hand, with, with individuals that needed to have that quiet, um, quiet time, worked with them to make sure that they had um, a period of time that they could go into the office or, or go to a, a separate location where they could have that quiet and solitude. Um, and then talking about structure and defined activity, I had one team member that would go to Starbucks, drive 10 minutes to Starbucks every morning, so he had a commute. He just needed that structure, that definition, that clear um, uh, stopping the blurring of the line. I had one that didn't have a Starbucks nearby that but would grab their coffee and walk around the neighborhood because that 10 minute walk uh, that, that, uh, that they did around the neighborhood added that structure, added an artificial um, commute. So one of the things just to highlight there is it's creativity. So it's really thinking about reflecting on what are the problems that we have and thinking of creative, maybe slightly different ways of solving those problems um, and helping people to understand when they're getting um, into that rut and um, what, what might be good solutions to, uh, to solve those problems. So constructing the great work environment. Um, it's really about the three Ps having purpose, productivity, um, and performance. Um, and one of the statistics is that 80% of employees today, so this is a, a survey that was done in the beginning of this, of 2022, only 80% or 80% of employees want purpose, but only 20% find it. So within purpose, what do we need to do in order to make sure that we have that purpose? So first off, we need to really clearly define what's needed. 
by answering the questions, why? What's the background and what's the impact to the business? And that's so important in a hybrid environment and a remote environment. Um, because there isn't always that clarity when you're outside of the, uh, uh, the common working area. So it's so important to define what projects are we working on? How do they impact the business? And what's important about it? Then it's also important to define when it's needed and how deeply do we need to go into to define, uh, um, do I just need a, a, quick, uh, a quick investigation or, or does it really need uh, uh, three to six months of, of deep, depth of information to be valuable. And then one thing which is, is really important for all of us, when, when we work with uh, individuals that are, are not directly with us is we need to transition from um, measuring output and, or to measure output from measuring activity. So when you're working with someone that's remote, um, that you don't see every day. And I, and I, my first experience with that was working with uh, uh, um, my colleagues in, in Mexico. So I didn't see them every day. I didn't know um, if they were sitting at their desk or not sitting at their desk. Um, and we only had a couple of meetings during the week, but it was really clearly defining what needed to be done by when we needed to have it. Um, giving opportunities to communicate in between in case there were roadblocks or other things going on, and then really measuring the output. Um, are we getting the projects done on time? Are we, are we um, communicating when there's roadblocks? And are we actually really uh, um, communicating how we need it and, and what we need? So it's really a lot of checks and balances. Um, I talked about having access to information. And one of the issues that we have sometimes is having to schedule a meeting just to find an answer. Um, so one of the improvements that you can do in the environment that you work in is have a way that people can access facts, FAQs, access history, what's been done before, how it's been done, have access to learning tools, whether it's directly from experts or whether it's um, external training or training, uh, online training that, that people can do at their own pace. But that, that additional, those additional tools and having access to that, whether it's a, a history of, of confluence and history of emails, um, databases, having access to that information is so very important, or even experts. Um, if there's something that, that you can't uh, read or learn, but you need to, to, to work with somebody to really understand how it works. And then regular checkpoints, um, checking in with people uh, from time to time and, and defining when, when those are is, is, is so very important. And then one clear uh, um, thing to spur creativity is creating random connections. So within your team or even outside of your team, um, there's a lot of tools that are now uh, popping up and are available to create virtual meetings, virtual coffee breaks with random people in the company or virtual lunches. And those are wonderful tools. Um, sometimes they need moderators to help them get started. But after, um, after people get used to them, they're really great options for getting those random connections to start back up and spurring creativity. Then if we talk about performance, um, the most productive individuals have leaders that are supporting, uh, developing their strengths um, and celebrating successes. It's so important when we're in, in a remote environment that when we do get together, whether it's in a hybrid, whether, whether we're, we're getting together in the office or whether we're getting together um, just on, online. It's important to, to celebrate in a team environment the successes um, and, and also recognize you know, when we're having a problem and, and what we did to solve it. So individuals want to be part of a, of a caring uh, team, finding purpose, um, and being supported in their development. So it's so important to celebrate success. Um, and we could talk a little bit more about that because I know that was some of the questions. Um, video and group calls. So when you're on a, on a video call and you're leading the conversation, it's good to reflect on where you're at. Are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you a little bit overconfident or maybe just unsure? Um, you might want to use uh, practice. 
practicing with friends, family, or, or other colleagues to get to, um, some practice in advance. Most important thing is to remember to slow down, keep the communication simple, and don't be afraid to go back and repeat important points. Uh, pause, ask questions, and definitely look into the camera uh, so that even in a virtual and hybrid environment, people feel like they're connecting. So I'm going to stop there and, and just check in before we before we move on to the next topics. Are there are there any questions that people want to put into the chat or or um, is this resonating? It does a, um, does any of this make sense or is there still some uh, questions or open points? Well, that's good. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to go on. Um, mm -hmm. We'll look at next mood. So, one important thing is that um, in a in a hybrid or remote environment, there is an important step of building an environment of mutual trust. So, when we're not physically connected and people need connection, we need to find ways to build that environment of mutual trust. Um, and turning on the cameras is a, is a really important way to do that, but getting people to feel comfortable with turning their cameras on because it is sharing intimate environment. Um, you can be working from home or maybe you have a bad hair day, um, but it's, it's important to be able to connect with people um, and to be able to get that nonverbal communication. Smiling when you're talking is important. So whether you're answering a question or whether you're communicating, communicating your emotions through how you speak is very important because um, it can become very impersonal when we're only connecting via Zoom. Uh, so it's, it's, it's so very important to, to be able to show your emotions. And sometimes when you're giving a tough message, you may even have to name your emotions. I'm very upset or I'm very anxious. Um, and, and that helps to connect on a personal level. Um, when I first started having virtual communication, it was just by phone. Um, and I found myself, you know, having to, to sometimes, you know, end with saying, hey, you know, I think this was a really good conversation. Um, or, hey, we really didn't get very far. So being able to name, name it at the end is, is important to make sure that you're all on the same page. And know that some days are just bad days. Some days, you know, when you're in the office, people can tell. When you don't look like you've had a good sleep, uh, when, when you just don't uh, look like you're there, some days are bad days. You may just need to let your audience know or to let your boss know or to let your colleagues know, hey, I'm having a bad day. And that's okay. People should be allowed to have bad days, but you know, we've got to work around them. It, it shouldn't stop getting business done. Um, and then there was some question about knowing your audience. Um, you know, it's so important to have the camera on because it is uh, time to connect with people. And then you can also see are people distracted um, or, or are you really hitting the message? Uh, are they nodding and following along? Um, or, or even frantically taking notes. So there might be some additional detail that's needed. Um, I wanted to have to share one quote with you. Uh, um, Albert Morevian, a researcher of body language, found that communication is 55% nonverbal, 38% is vocal, and 7% is the words. So it's so very important that the tonal intonation is, is part of the vocal, the nonverbal, what people can see on, on video is so very important to aid in the overall communication. So keep that in mind um, when, you're, when you're on video calls and when you're working in a hybrid environment, or even if you're just on the phone with people um, to make sure you may have to repeat things multiple times. You may have to go back and talk about the, um, the points that need to get through. Um, there's other interactions, of course, um, very important in a hybrid environment to make sure that uh, um, the format allows everyone to participate. Um, so often I've been in conferences, 
just want to make sure that no one's clicking. <laughs> um, any co-host can click and move the slide. So make sure that you're uh, not touching the screen too frequently. Um, hybrid environment. Um, you need to make sure that the, um, the format allows everyone to participate. Um, early on, we had people trying to uh, uh, work on whiteboards without having camera feeds and, and whatnot. Um, but there's so many great tools in, in Teams or in, in Zoom where you can use the whiteboards online. Um, you can break up into smaller groups using, um, using either Teams or, uh, or Zoom, and the, the host can bring everyone back together. Uh, so use those, those tools um, uh, to their effectiveness, effectiveness, because it allows us to, to recreate the things that worked in the office environment. Um, and then it's very important to test those connections, um, check in with remote locations, um, and check in with participants. Uh, when you do schedule in-person meetings, make sure that there's enough time to plan around it. Recognize that, that people have changed their schedules and, and they have a new norm. And so um, if you want to have in-person meetings, um, making sure that people are moving around their, their, uh, their regular day-to-day -day things so that, that um, it does fit with the in-person meetings that, that, that are now starting to happen in, in hybrid environments. Um, and schedule group interactions. So in-person activities, team building, networking, building those connections, those are so important. Um, one good piece of advice is um, spend some time at the beginning, at the end of, of your team meetings to just let people talk about their personal lives. Today, when we all got together, we talked about gardening. That was just a, a topic that somehow randomly come up. But it's a way to build a connection with, with people, um, whether the team wants to talk about golf or wants to talk about vacation. It's so important to allow those personal times to chat, either at the very beginning or at the very end, to help recreate those environments. That is, as people are coming into a meeting a few minutes early, they have a chance to, to, to chat informally and build connections, build that level of trust with team members. Um, and I did also hear a couple of, of um, people that joined today work with nonprofit groups. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of, of team building activities that are linked to nonprofit activities, giving back, whether it's helping um, packaging um, toiletries for, uh, for homeless or whether it's um, packaging food for, for individuals or whether it's just do, doing a can drive. Um, and, and doing some bowling. Those are wonderful ways to build connections to the community that you work around, team build with your organization, and really feel that connectedness, not, not just to your own team members, but to the, to the community and around. Um, there's amazing online activities. Uh, one thing that I found is, is, is uh, Domino had offered for a while um, the opportunity that you can order pizzas and have them delivered to multiple different locations and pay for them out of one location. So you could have a virtual pizza party with your team. Um, everyone eating pizza and drinking soda together online. Um, sounds kind of silly, but you know, it, it, it really, people were so happy for that. And the leftovers they shared with their family, of course. So it's... Uh, um, Creative creativity um, is, is always what's needed to, to find solutions and, and humans are wonderfully creative and adaptable. So in, in summary, um, the most effective remote and hybrid leaders can transition from managing activity to managing progress and results. Um, and doing that by clearly communicating expectations having multiple ways to ask questions or find answers, find those FAQs, find the history um, and work with experts, um, that you establish trust and connection through connecting with people, sharing your emotions online um, as best as you can and listening for emotional cues from the people that you work with um, and using check-ins to connect with team members, supervisors and other groups. Um, as, as, as ways to connect and, and very importantly, um, looking for ways to connect on a personal level, letting people talk about what's happening in their lives. So that's uh, my uh, 
hints in a nutshell. Um, and, and hopefully uh, we tagged most of the questions that came out, but if not, um, we can have an open Q&A.